One of the features that gives you a much more uh, full-featured DAW experience when using Live 5 is a simple feature called locators. As I'm um, playing through this particular track, I can click this set button, it's on the top right here above all the track names, uh, and it will drop a locator uh, into, into the sequencer. Right? So we're going to jump to bar 9 here, and we'll set a locator there. And we're going to do another one at bar 17. Drop one there, and then we'll put one more over here. Looks like about 29. Okay. Now, with most of their applications, the locators you can are, are already signed to a particular key on your keyboard. In Live 5, you can assign them to any key that you like. So, if you Apple K, you'll see everything that you, that turns this pink color can be assigned to it as uh, can be assigned to a key on your QWERTY or computer keyboard. So, you simply click on the the, the uh, locators you want to assign it to, and then press the key that you want it to be assigned to. Okay? So we're going to do a, assign each of these locator points a key on my keyboard here. Now, we'll make that one the R so we're consistent. Now I can jump back and forth between each of the sections of my song. And in fact, if we wanted to, we can also rename these locators. Uh, but I can jump back and forth between the sections of my song by pressing the arrow key, okay, or, and actually let's, let's make the locator really tight to we left it, yeah that's better. So now, um, the same way that we were moving between different sections of our song in the session view, okay, so here we had our verse, our chorus, our pickup section, all of those different things, I can do those with the locators, and Live will launch and move to these locators constraint to whatever my quantize value is set to. We'll go back and set this to bar, and then we'll launch from our different locator points. So we'll start with the first one, and not until the bar change to actual count one, the downbeat, do you see it jump. Then maybe we'll jump to the fourth one, and again, it'll wait for the downbeat before it makes the change. Uh, and then I'll jump to the third one, maybe. The, again, so the idea is, not only is this a helpful tool in the studio to give it, make this a much more full-functioning DAW, but this is also a great function in, if you're working in a, um, in a live scenario to be able to move back and forth between these sections without having to use the uh, uh, session view of the sequencer. Um, there's also new features in the way live uh, handles it, the, its transport. Uh, for example, as I'm looking at my sequencer here, I get a little speaker icon. Uh, right under the timeline. So, again, constrained to my quantize value, when I click, Live will move to that section on whatever, uh, constrained to whatever the quantize value is set to. So here we're set to bar, and you'll see it not change until the downbeat in the next bar. And there it goes. Okay. Like, so this is also a useful feature in the studio or in live performance because now you can move back and forth between these sections really easily. But also, if we flip back to our session view, if I double click on one of my clips, I can I have that same function with within the, the individual clip. So we're going to solo that. And now I can jump back and forth between different sections of this clip and have them always be locked to bar. Okay. The other neat thing too is much more like a hardware sampler, and this has to do with the transport control in live, I can now move through the clip using a MIDI controller really easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I hit the Apple M and we get that violet color on all the things that we can assign to MIDI uh, again. This little empty square, when you click on that, you can now twist the knob. Okay, so I click on it, I twist the knob here on my O2, which is just an assignable MIDI controller. Get rid of my violet, so I've got Apple M again. And now you'll notice on the bottom right through my clip display, you can see my cursor moving around as I give the, the knob on my O2 a turn. Okay? When I stop moving that cursor, it will play that section, but again, con constrained to whatever my quantized value is set to. So if I'm set to bar, I can jump to another section, and it will move at, at a bar at a time, whatever my grid value is set to, and, it, and then launch that section just by turn, turning a knob. So it makes it really easy to improvise to some of these sounds. Another new feature in Ableton Live 5 
is um, the, its time-stretching algorithms, okay? Um, when the folks over at Ableton f created the software, it was intended to be um, a tool for, for musicians that didn't want to perform as DJs and didn't want to press play in a sequencer. But they found that a lot of DJs really began to use this software, and they wanted to begin to sequence MP3s. Well, what's wrong with the difficulty with MP3s is that it takes a different type of time stretch algorithm to give us that uh, um, a time stretch MP3, which is made up of a completely mastered project, bass, uh, drums, and anything else that might be a part of that, guitars, pianos, keyboards, that sort of thing. Well, Live 5 now adds a time stretch alg algorithm that's called complex, that's much more suited for MP3s. Another new feature in Live 5 is the uh, beat detect or warping function is much more sophisticated than it was previously. Um, in previous versions, if you had a human uh, sample, something that was played by humans, in other words, it wasn't sequenced, you would have to go through and adjust warp markers to perfect lives warping or live, lives beat detection. Now, in the new version, live will warp marker all of those things for you instantly. Okay? Because of that, because of that new sort of extra step that it does to do that, that it has to take to do that, uh, it takes a little bit longer to import audio in live, but this is another great feature. Remember the right click we talked about before. If I right click on my hard drive, I now have an option that says analyze audio. Okay? And what that'll do, that'll go through and analyze every audio file on your hard drive. Now you don't have to do it to your hard drive if you don't want to. You can do it to just a folder called Sound Library, or do it to a folder where you have all your MP3s, because what that does is that analyzes and time warps and beat detects every single sound file on your computer and makes it content available for you to be able to play. So no longer are they just songs you listen to, but now they're clips that you can use to, to perform in, with Live 5. That's about the bulk of what's new in Live 5. Um, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.